in Town Hall again. It's Saturday afternoon. That week goes so quickly. So many hundreds of people this week have been saved by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We're here again to preach the gospel. We're here again to speak with people, get people safe in the hand of Jesus. So the Bible says that this is eternal life, that you know the one true God and his son, Jesus Christ, who he sent. So there's one true God. And the Bible also says that unless you are born again, Jesus said it, John chapter 3, verse 3, unless you are born again of the Spirit of God, you cannot even see the kingdom of God. Very important. It's like a spiritual blindness on people's hearts. And that's why we come out to pray with people, get that spiritual blindness lifted so you can start to understand because the Bible says that the natural mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. Okay, noisy sirens. So the natural mind cannot understand the things of the spirit. And I see it so often on the street here, on people's faces, they walk by. I don't need God on their face. It's that look, it's that lack of understanding in their, in their heart, that non-ability to understand. Because everybody born after Adam, when Adam rebelled, Adam and Eve rebelled in the garden. Every one of us was born under rebellion. Every one of us was born under condemnation. And that's why Jesus Christ came to change that, to fix that problem. So I see that spiritual blindness on people. And I see the fact that people think there's not just one true God, but there's lots of gods. Or there's my God, the one I've created from my own truth, the one that suits my sinful lifestyle. I see people saying that they have the same God, although it's a very different God in my mind. And there's a very good reason for that. I get a lot of Muslim people coming up to me on the street. They want to discuss in great depth why Jesus is not God, why he didn't die on the cross. Somebody else was put there in his place, why he didn't rise again, why the Bible is being corrupted. It's not true. I hear it from people. It's a spiritual blindness speaking. It is not the truth speaking. And I can tell you why. The Bible is not corrupted. I'll give you an example of why it is not corrupted. The book of Isaiah, an amazing book in the Old Testament, 700 years before Jesus Christ came to this earth. The Bible prophesied, or God prophesied through Isaiah the prophet, the things that Jesus would do. And there are 351 prophecies in the Old Testament that Jesus Christ fulfilled to the date, to the letter. Every one of them fulfilled. That is why the Bible is true. A lot of people say to me, the Muslims come up to me and say, oh no, you know, those things were, were said after Jesus died, years after he died. They're not true. They were made up to suit the prophecy. And then in 1947, in a place called Cameron, Near the Dead Sea, a wonderful thing happened. A little boy was throwing a stone, it went into a cave and it hit some pottery in there. And what was discovered were the Dead Sea, what is known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls, within them was the complete book of Isaiah. Every single word of it intact. And what the Jews through the ages did, they faithfully reproduced the book of Isaiah along with the rest of the Torah and the Word of God. They faithfully, to the letter, reproduced it to, to what it is today. And those scrolls found there in 1947, they dated back, they checked the dates, everyone had to go out checking them, both sides, believers, non-believers, secular, Christian, whatever, all tested them and found them to be identical to what is written today. They are true. So given that all the prophecies fulfilled, given the validity of the book of Isaiah, I'm going to read something out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 9. 
It's very important. It's concerning Jesus Christ. It's very specific. The Muslims want to say that Jesus is not God and it's very convenient for the devil to fabricate five truths and sell three lies within it in some counterfeit representation of the events of the, the Quran and Muhammad and all the rest of it to be like, try to be like Christianity, try to be like Jesus, try to be like saying the fact we have the same God. It is not the same God. And I'll tell you why it is not the same God. Abraham, every Muslim tells me, we all come from Abraham, our father Abraham. That's why we're all the same. That's why we have the same God. Listen very carefully. God made a promise to Abraham. He said, Sarah, 80 years old, barren, I will give you a child. This child was a, God of, a child of promise from God himself. But Sarah was impatient. She didn't believe God. She lacked faith. She said, I'll get Hagar, the slave girl, to sleep with Abraham. And a son was born, Ishmael. Ishmael was born, but he was not a child of the promise. He was a child of disobedience. Very much, very, very important. Isaac was born eventually to Sarah, and God made the promise through Abraham to the Israelites, Israel, not to Ishmael. And the 12 tribes of Israel were formed and out of that lineage came Jesus Christ and the 12 tribes of Ishmael were formed and out of that lineage came Islam came the Arabs this is why this is why the origins of it are from disobedience not from the promise of God